and um, we'll get started on today's lesson 3.7. This is the part two of our project Emotionscape. This is the fun part. So um, hopefully everybody has their artwork to work with. And you're nice and warm because I am chilly today. I don't know why. I, I got up super early and took my dog for a long walk and there was ice on everything around here and I just got a chill then and I can't seem to shake it but hopefully you guys are nice and warm so I'm going to get started um, as you know today is 3.7 and we're going to finish up our art project that we started on Friday so I have a little something to show you let me share my screen and let me click all the right buttons to make sure the sound works so um, <clears throat> this is a photograph of an image and this is ¿Qué pasa? This, this is by an artist by the name of Othon Fries and um, this is definitely in the school of fauves because it was made in 1907 and it has a lot of fauve um, techniques use of color and all that kind of stuff so I want you to really really take a good look at it and um, and then we're gonna slide on over to a Mentimeter. And I'm gonna ask you, we're gonna build a word cloud and I'm gonna ask you to type in what you're noticing. And I think I gave everybody like 10, 10 responses. Like you can, you can put in 10 things that you're seeing. So you can talk about subject, you can talk about color, you could talk about technique, like all those fauve techniques that we've been discussing, right? So just take a look. What is the fa your favorite thing about this painting? The first thing that comes to your mind when you look at this painting that you go, oh, I kind of like that, right? And then I'm going to throw in the chat. Um, what, where I want you to go. So here is the URL in the chat. Copy and paste in the chat. And then click on that link there. And, um, and I'll open it up here. There you go. And then just type in subject matter or fauve technique like you know all those fauve techniques or color that you're in love with but there should be something that you can find about this painting that you love so remember the to the fauve techniques are like using complementary colors right wild brush strokes lack of detail very big departure from realism and um, perfect, great answers. A lot of color, abstracted. What else? What else are you guys seeing there? The first thing I see, I see trees when I first look at it. I, mean, you, I know the mountains are, are really obvious, you know, but what is it that you see? When you first look at this, give me a couple more answers. <laughs> what else are we seeing when we look at this? It's definitely a fauve painting. Maybe you see the sky, there's some ocean there. I think some blue skies. There's like lots of trees, maybe a villa or two. So go ahead and throw in the chat. What is the thing that you see about this painting that you find to be really lovely? What's your favorite part? I'm just going to wait until I get a couple more responses up there before we move on and get to our art making. So please put in some, some things that you really like about this. You could type color, you could type red, you could type mountains, you could type green, you could type um, seascape, you can type landscape. There's something in there. Okay. 
Have some confidence, you guys. What are you seeing in this painting? Come on, Autumn, Brendan, Brendan, Bayani, Faith, Kay, Krista Ray, Mariana, Namaya, Nikari, Slane, Kirby. What are you seeing when you look at this painting? What's the first thing you see? What's the first thing you notice? The link is in the chat. Let me put it in there again in case um, you came in after I posted it. There you go. You should be able to click on that Menti link and just type in a word. What do you see? What's the first? Oh, awesome, Kirby. So Kirby, go ahead and click on that link that I put in the chat and type color. That's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh, it looks cartoonish. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Looks cartoonish. I'll take that. What else? I think I think that what you're seeing when you say that it looks cartoonish, I think it's that, you know, that lack of detail. The link is an image. Oh, okay. Let me uh let me go back. Trees, a lot of color. Awesome. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, great. Lots of orange. Yes. Thank you. Okay, that's perfect. That's exactly the kind of stuff that I was looking for. Thank you so much. Okay, so now we're going to move on. So you got you got that fauve idea down. Um, so let me show you a video. This is perhaps one of the most famous printmakers because we're going to be printing today. So I thought I'd show you this. This is silkscreen printmaking. This is Andy Warhol, arguably the most famous printmaker ever. You know, his paint, his print make, his prints go for millions and millions of dollars. And this is um, just a really quick video, one minute and 18 seconds of him working on making a print. So here, here you go. With his artwork in demand as never before, Warhol resolved to step up production. In January 1963, he moved his studio from the parlor of his townhouse, no longer large enough to accommodate his larger paintings, to the third floor of an abandoned red brick firehouse a few blocks away on East 87th Street. In June, to increase production still further, he took on a new assistant, a 20-year-old college student from the Bronx named Gerard Malanga who had learned how to silkscreen a few years before while working for a necktie manufacturer. The more you look at Warhol's work, the more you look at Warhol, the more you see a mind constantly engaged in the studio. We see him making a series of decisions in the studio, how one painting leads to another painting, how one series leads to another painting. And there are a series of insights and you get a sort of logic almost that unfolds in the studio that's of an intensely committed and engaged, sophisticated and thoughtful artist. All right, so that was Andy Warhol. And today we're actually going to be working on- Hello there, everyone. My name is- Nope. Um... Nope, not hello. <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to be working on making a, a mono print. So Andy Warhol did a silk screening. I'm wondering how many of you have ever made a silk screen or in a class in school in a brick and mortar, you made other kind of printmaking. So if you have done any kind of printmaking before, whether it was in school or in some other program, type a, type a yes in the chat so I can see how many of us have have played around with printmaking? Awesome, awesome, Brendan. Anybody else? And um, if you haven't, then please type a no so that I know that you're um, 
you're here in class with me. So I know that you're uh, paying attention to what's going on here. All right, I just have Brendan and Faith here. Aubrey, thank you, Aubrey. Anybody else? Kirby, no, okay. All right, good, so today's your lucky day because you're gonna be doing some printmaking. So that's awesome. So um, one type of printmaking, Nakari, no? Okay, that's good, um, is called mono printmaking. And that's a process where you're just making one print that's kind of like, there's never gonna be that print again, where as opposed to like Andy Warhol's where he had a silk screen and he could make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of prints from that silk screen. So um, let me show you this video. It's just about kind of the technique that we're gonna be using today to make a print. All right, so I am gonna show you how to do that from your house with the materials that you have from CCA. But before we do, let's do our, our doodle. So I have a uh, Marilyn Monroe, which is a print by Andy Warhol. It's probably the most famous print by the most famous, famous printmaker. So let's color her as if we are faux artists, right? So grab your annotate and um, and let me turn my annotate on and um, we'll get started. I'm going to make her look as, as foby as possible. So um, join me in on that. Here we go. Thank you, Faith. Thank you for jumping in. I appreciate that. Good, good, good. <laughs> Faith, you and I are like always doing kind of the similar things. Remember, we're phobes, so we have to, you know, use unnatural colors, right? Because that's what we do. Yeah, we like to we like to shake things up as foods. This looks great. <laughs> I'm really glad I I'm really glad I found this picture of Marilyn because this looks really great. I love it. All right, you guys, thank you so much. It's great. Okay, I don't even want to erase it because it looks so great, but um, we got to say goodbye to Marilyn. So let me clear it and uh, 
and we'll move on. All right, so Unit 3 Gallery. Look at this amazing artwork we have here, Brendan. Again, thank you so much for posting your finished piece. This is what we're going to be doing today. That looks great. And um, Logan isn't here, I don't think, but um, Logan has his drawing up. And also um, another one, I guess this was the beginning of it. Um, and Kalila, thank you. I love these red trees. Um, Kalila, I don't think she's here. Sienna, beautiful. Sienna's not here, but that's beautiful. Um, Jennifer and um, another one, Jennifer finished that one. So that's that looks great. Thank you, everybody. Remember, all of these are worth five extra points towards your participation. So even though like um, Brendan's going to receive a big grade for these, um, he's also going to get bonus points because he posted it. So that's that's really great. All right. So just a really quick review. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, just a really quick review. Last time we were together, we completed Completed our um, our our um, watercolors. Remember, we painted those full sheets of watercolor paper that you're now going to use. You're going to chop them up and basically collage them together, but not until we print on top of them first, because we're going to make them look a little bit more fovey. So we we reviewed all of the project requirements. So it's a landscape using unnatural colors, paying attention to placing complementary colors next to each other. Right, so that would be the colors on the color wheel that are, are opposite each other. That's how you find your complementary colors. So red and green, blue and orange, yellow and purple. Those are some examples of complementary colors because they're opposite each other on the color wheel. Okay, good. So now I'm gonna get started um, talking about some of our vocabulary words. So I'm gonna switch back to sharing. All right, so first of all, let me click on this amazing um, Marilyn Monroe. So this was the doodle that we just did, right? So it's a print, it's a silkscreen print. And if print is any work of art that's made with a process that transfers an image onto paper or fabric or really any other surface, it could even be a wall, you know, like I, I think that Banksy is really a printmaker because he uses stencils and that's transferring an image onto a, a wall for him. So this is an Andy Warhol print, which is a silkscreen print. And I wish that we could actually do silkscreen printing, um, but I think it's a little, we're a little limited with the materials that we have. So this is um, a woodblock print. This is arguably um, the most famous woodblock print that's ever been made. And this is the wave by Husuka. Um, let me see if there's any other. Um, here's another one by same artist. So these are woodblock prints and the Japanese artists were just masters at making these uh, woodblock prints. But again, this is definitely the most famous of them all. So woodblock printmaking is considered a subtractive process because you remove material from a piece of wood in order to create a raised surface that you then put ink on. Now, every one of these colors, so this blue color and that blue color and that blue color, every one of the colors has a se separate plate. And then the artist kind of registers those plates by by like kind of really lining them up nicely on the paper while they're printing so that each color um, kind of, you know, butts up against each other. And we're going to kind of be doing that when we create our collage by cutting out on the watercolor paper. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a little bit. But I found I found this GIF and it's an artist making a woodblock print. So you can see first they use like a blue marker to make a drawing on their sheet of wood. And then they get that tool, which is called a gouge. And they remove wood from the wooden plate 
so that all that remains is that blue marker line and it's raised above the surface. And then they get like kind of like this thing called a brayer, which looks like a roller that you would paint a wall with. They get this brayer and they put ink on the brayer and then they roll it all over the surface of the wood and it only hits those areas where the blue marker is because the blue marker is raised above the surface. And then they rub a piece of paper on it and wherever the ink is, like where those blue lines are, the ink transfers onto a piece of paper and then they get their wood block print. So that's basically how you do it. So the first thing the artist does is they create a drawing, right? So you can draw directly on your wood or for a wood block print, or you can draw on a piece of paper and then transfer it onto, onto the wood. And then after the drawing is on the wood, then they begin carving into the wood or you could carve into other material. I know in um, some of the classes that I taught in brick and mortar, we would carve into a piece of like linoleum or something softer. Sometimes teachers will get kids to carve into like a, an eraser and then make it kind of like a stamp. And that's, that, that's just a print, like a stamp is a print, right? Because it has like a raised surface where the ink goes and then you just stamp it onto paper or wherever. So once the image is created and carved into the surface, the artist can then use it many, 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 many times. So printing has changed throughout time, like as technology has changed, right? So now we even say, if you have a, like a Word document, you know, digitally you send it to your home printer and then your home printer prints it out using technology that I don't even understand, but you have multiples of the original being being print out, right? So you can see this is a humongous woodblock print that this artist is um, carving into right now. But I just wanted to show you some others. So this is a piece of wood and this design is carved into it and it has a really great perspective to it, right? It's really, really cool. Some printmakers, this one looks like it's like a UFO or something. Um, some printmakers uh, make little tiny ones. Like that's a just a little tiny um, plate that they made. And some are much bigger, right? So they're all different sizes. And um, we're just going to print on paper and then collage it together. Right. OK, so before we do that, I'm going to get into that. We just want to have one question that I want to answer. So I'm going to flip back over to Edio and I'm going to go to page. I'm going to go to page four. Um, so it says to drag to correct order the steps an artist takes to make a print. So what is let's say so the beginning of each line is um, a T a C and an A. So you can type into the chat, either T, C or A, whichever one you think is first. So transfer the image onto a surface, create or carve an image or add layers of color to show details. Which one do you think comes first? C, T, A, which one do you think comes first? Yes, Faith, perfect. You have to create, you have to create the image first. So go ahead and grab that and take it to the top. And then what comes next after that? Actually, right now, it is in the order that's correct. So first you create or carve an image. Then once it's carved, you put ink on it and you transfer the image onto another surface, like a piece of paper or a piece of fabric. And then you add layers of color to show detail. So you would have a plate for each color that you want in your picture when it's finished. And then you just keep printing on top of each color until you get it exactly the way you want it. So that's perfect. So let's go take a look at um, what Edio says about our project that we're going to do today. So I am on page six. 
And Edio wants you to have your chalk pastels, your drawing from Friday, your glue, a large bowl of water, paper towels, pencil, scissors, watercolor paintings. Uh, those are the sheets of watercolor and a canvas board. And then you can take a look at the finished product that Edio has for you. And uh, you can click through these slides of all the steps. There's a video here that you can watch if you would rather watch a video than click through the slides. There's another video, <laughs> two videos. And then um, just to make sure that you check on page 11 that you've hit all your requirements so that you have your mixed media paper painted with watercolors. The watercolors paper are cut out so that they fit into um, the collage and arranged and glued down. And I'm gonna go through all of that with you. Then here on page 12, do your upload so that you get your grade. This is worth 18 points. And then if you are going to upload your image, you might as well just bop over to unit three gallery and upload your image there and get five extra bonus points for posting it and sharing your artwork with everybody else. All right, so now I'm gonna show you um, how I did mine. So hopefully um, that'll be helpful for you. Okay, so let me share my, let me share my screen. Change, let me change my screen that I'm sharing so that you can see my tabletop. Give me a second to do that. Okay. So, um, let me just, uh, you guys can see my materials here, right? Can you see my materials there? Faith, can you see my materials here? Yeah, okay, great. So I have my, I am using um, these acrylics. Um, and of course, Edio wants you to use the pastels, but this is how, this is how I'm going to do it. I think it's the the process is easier, and I think that the results are way way more fun. So I'm using acrylics, and then I have scissors and glue because we're going to basically make a collage. So we need those. I have some paper towels because we're going to be I'm going to be using wood and acrylics. This is my end result from last year that I did. Um, here is my drawing that I did on Friday. This is what I'm going to work from. And then I have all of my sheets of watercolor paper that I made on Friday. So I went ahead and added my printmaking to these. So this is my blue, and I printed these white lines on top of it that you can see here. I printed some purple squiggly lines on top of my green. And then uh, on my purple and on my yellow paper, um, I also printed, on the yellow, I printed some green lines. Let me bring it closer so you can see it. And on the purple, I kind of did these orange dots. And then on my red paper, which I really love so much, I love the way this came out, I printed blue dots on top of the red. And then I have a printout here of my original because I'm not gonna, I don't wanna cut up my original cause I'm gonna save it in case I have to meet with a student um, in Zoom and help them with this. I wanna have my original to show them. So I'm gonna be working with this color printout that I have, but you should, you should work from your, you should work from your original. And then I have my mixed media pad and some paintbrushes and some water here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my print of my on my orange paper because I haven't done that one yet. So this is a piece of plexiglass that I have down. And um, you know, if you don't have plexiglass, you can just put down like a piece of wax paper or a piece of tin foil or a piece of plastic wrap, or even like you can even use like a plastic bag. You can just you know, cut out a sheet of plastic bag and put that down to protect your table that you're working on. But whichever one you want to do, 
um, is good as long as you don't damage, you know, your your table. So I'm going to do orange. And I think what the color that I'm going to put on my orange is I think I'm going to put like a green color on my orange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my green acrylic paint and I'm going to put a little blob down on the table like that. And then I'm just going to make some marks, right? So I'm just going to take some green paint and I'm just going to make some squiggly lines and some dots. And I'm just going to, I'm just creating some, some texture. And I'll show you what you do with this. All right. I think that looks good. Just some squiggly lines, some dots, whatever you want to do. Then I'm going to take, take my paper and I'm going to lay it down on top and rub it. Now it's transferring that image onto the paper. And now it is a mono print. Mono meaning one and print meaning transfer. So there it is. So I still have some paint on the um, on the tabletop. So I'm gonna do another section of the paper. And I got some more on there. So I'm just gonna put down some more paint. You can follow your old lines that you had or your old pattern that you have down, or you can make some new ones. And I'm going to now sop up that print on another area of my paper. There we go. And there's still some, there's still some paint on the surface of the table. So I'm going to reprint that what's there. Right, so I'm just putting down some lines, some texture, like the Foves would do. I'm running out of paint. I didn't put enough paint down. And um, so I'm missing some, some marks in this area. So I'm going to put that area down just so I have a nice amount of printmaking marks all over all over the paper. All right, so I'm really happy with that. That looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna just clean clean up my mess I made here. So I'm just gonna grab some of my paper towels. And I'm just gonna wipe up the surface. I have a little bit of water on the paper towel and that's it, it's completely cleaned up. So super easy, super easy to get those mono prints done. Okay, so the next step is you're gonna take your drawing and you're gonna take your scissors that you got in your pack, right? And you're gonna cut out all of the shapes. So I'm gonna cut out the green. Okay, so these are my two green shapes. And then you grab your green paper. So here's my green paper. And I'm gonna throw them down however they land, right? Get a, a pencil and I'm gonna trace them. Now I like to trace them a little tiny bit larger than what they actually are, just like by a couple of millimeters, because I don't want any, I don't want there to be any gaps when I glue them next to each other. So just in case they don't fit together perfectly like a jigsaw puzzle. You know that if they, if you make it a little bit bigger then they definitely will overlap. And now I'm gonna cut those shapes out. Now, Edio wants you to do this on one of your nine by 12 canvas boards, but I'm just gonna do it on the mixed media paper.
Okay, so now I have my two shapes and I can get rid of that paper. Here are my two shapes. Put those to the side. And next I'm going to do this red shape. So I'm going to grab my red paper, which is right here. Now, I kind of really love this area right here. I think that came out the best. So I'm going to I'm going to trace that area. Just make it a little tiny bit bigger. You can always cut it back. Remember, this is abstract, right? You're going for a fovis work of art. So we're not really worried too much about detail or perfectionism. The, the fovis were like the opposite of perfectionists. All right, I'm cutting out my purple and my yellow together because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So my purple and my yellow are together. And um, so I'm going to trace this area. I like this. I like this area right here of my purple. So I'm just going to place my, I'm keeping them together because they're so tiny that I, I just don't want them to get lost if I separate them. Right. So I'm just going to draw a line across there. And then my yellow is just a tiny, tiny little piece. So I'm just going to trace that like that and cut that out. And I'm almost done. I think you can probably get this done. You could probably get this done in maybe 15 minutes and it's worth a lot on your grade so I mean look how fast I'm going I almost have all of my parts And my orange clouds. There we go. And now I can trace those. And I like, um, let me see, I love the squiggles over here. So I think I'm gonna try to capture this one squiggle. And then um, this squiggle over here, I really like. So I'm not being perfect about tracing these, And I'm not being perfect about cutting them out either. Because uh, the, the complementary colors, the contrast and the vibrancy and the visual energy that you get from those are going to really kind of stop the viewer from being interested in seeing any detail. So the blue of the sky in my drawing takes up a lot of area at the top. So I'm gonna use that instead of cutting it out and having it, the clouds fit into it, I'm just gonna use it as the entire backdrop. I'm gonna show you. Okay, so here is my blue sky. And I'm gonna just glue down, let me get this organized. 
So here are my clouds. I'm just gonna actually glue them right down on here. Here is the road. Here are the treetops. We're gonna go in about there. And the trunks of the trees are gonna go about there. This is the sides like this. And now I'm just gonna glue it all together. And I'm done my Fovis landscape. And then after I'm done, I'm gonna trim up the sides. So let me let me just glue down just the clouds, just so you can see. Just put a little bit of glue there and it's gonna fit right here. So I'm gonna go around and glue all of this down um, off camera and then um, I'll show you, I'll post it onto our gallery and show you how it came out. Um, does anybody have any questions about anything that I just did? Any questions, any problems, anything like that? Everybody good? All right, let me come back to my regular screen. Okay, so good. I hope that everybody understands the monoprint method and then collaging it all together using your original drawing as your pattern. So you're going to cut out the shapes and then trace them and then glue it all together. Okay, so now let's just jump over and finish up. I'm going to go back to Edio and um, we can put in our exit ticket and be done. Get those extra points as well. Okay. So um, let's see, oh, I'm sharing the wrong screen. Hold on a second. Let me give you Edio. Okay, good. All right, so um, let's go to page 13 here and make sure that everybody did um, did all of the all of the goals for today. So when you get done your project, make sure that your project is complete and you've met all the requirements. So all of your co complementary colors have printing on them and then they all fit together like a collage. And don't forget one extra bonus point when we get to the exit ticket. And here is a link to the gallery. Make sure you post an image of your artwork so that you can get those bonus points. All right, here's the exit ticket. Um, let me put that link in the chat so you can come on over here. Copy and let me paste it in the chat. You can just click on it and come on in. All right, there you go. So let me approve Sienna's. You guys can do this any time before unit three closes to get your extra bonus points. And then once you get your bonus point in, go ahead and finish your project and have an awesome day. Yes, Nikari. So you use, use the picture that you did in part one, right? So this is, this is the image that I made on Friday. Oops, I guess you can't see it. Let me just share my screen really quickly so you can see what I'm doing. Let me switch, switch cameras and take my blur off. Yeah, so this is, this is the drawing that I made on Friday. And then this is going to be the finished piece once I get it all glued down. And you can see that they are um, very similar. So this was just used as the pattern and the um, inspiration to do this piece, right? Anybody else have any questions? Thanks, Nakari, for that question. Um, what's the blue? What's the blue on this one, Nakari? Or the blue one, this one or this one, the top one or the bottom one? 
the bottom one. So this is, this was just, let me move these pieces off. This was just watercolor that I put on paper. We did this on Friday. You just take blue watercolor and I just put it everywhere. And then I put down white lines of acrylic paint on my plexiglass and made a mono print on top of it. Let me see if I can get really closer. So it's, um, okay, good. Good, you get it. All right, good. If anybody has any other questions, once you start doing the project, just send me a chat, uh, send me, um, you know, uh, an email, you can book a meeting with me, whatever you like, and I will go over it. So just try it. It's really easy and it happens really quickly and you get a beautiful result from it. So good luck, everybody. And, um, and I'll see you. I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye, everyone. Bye, Brendan. Bye. So, thanks so much for participating. I really appreciate it. Bye, Selene. Bye, Kay. Bye, Dayani. Bye, Autumn. Bye, Aubrey. Have an awesome day. See you on Wednesday. All right, you guys, I'm going to close out the Zoom, and I, I hope you have fun with this project. Have an awesome day.